that today. Uh, 6.58, we're going to go in with uh, Father Val Rodriguez, the Catholic School's uh, superintendent, and then we'll get into your uh, first look at news yes, here uh, on the link. Again, brought to you by Pacific Points, Calvo Enterprises, it and and Jack in the Box. Good morning, Father Val. Hi, good morning, Chris. Good morning, Jason and Joe, sir. <laughs> How are you this very crazy days? <laughs> How are you, Father Val? <laughs> I'm good. Right on. It's been very uh, busy days, Woo. and, you know, I'm sure you know what it means. <laughs> yeah, I do, Father Val. But I just yeah. gotta, I gotta, I, I gotta say, I support the decision for you guys to to move to online. I think. Oh, thank you very much. Very yeah. prudent. We have, of course, uh, we have, of course, mixed reactions to yeah. the decisions that we made. But we, we we cannot really please everyone. At the end of the day, being in the leadership uh, position, you just have to make a decision which you think is the right thing to do. In. Wow. In a leadership position, you make a decision uh, about the right thing to do, and that was the decision that uh, you had made, uh, Father Val. Uh, let's go into the, the reasoning. I mean, obviously, the reasons are obvious, but I just want to hear it from you. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I think the very first reason we asked ourselves really is, why did we decide to go and shift to distance or remote learning? Well, of course, the very obvious reason, Chris, is that number one, uh, the number of positive cases on island, we are not talking of the Catholic schools, but of the island-wide situation is very alarming. As we all know, last night we have 815 new cases. Uh, uh, Tuesday, we have 637. That's why when we have those, me personally, when I saw all of those figures, I really like have to start uh, seriously thinking about the situation. And uh, of course, when we talk of uh, of the high number of positive cases on island, the first question I ask myself is how could I help in a way curve the surge that is going on? So we all know, that, of course, that the members of the Catholic schools are members of this island community. So whatever we do in our little communities affect the whole island. So I ask myself, how can we help in curbing the these surge, okay, the spike in the number of positive cases? So with that, uh, of course, I was thinking that uh, we uh, try to avoid or lessen the possibilities of avenues of transmissions. So, of course, being together, that's kind of like for me, a kind of a venue where possible transmissions are uh, could happen. I would like to make uh, it clear, Chris, that there has been no evidence so far that the transmissions had occurred in any of our schools. But of course, we cannot deny the fact that uh, the number of cases, it's just, it's just expected. If the island-wide number is going up, I'm, I'm expecting that our numbers in the Catholic schools, I don't really have the figure, are also going up. So of course, <laughs> uh, in that case, when some of our students go, of course, if they test positive, then you have an issue of students not having the opportunity to learn because they will be in their homes. So some of our teachers will have to go through into a, like you have students face to face with you and some students will be online. You can just imagine how difficult that will be for, for the teachers. So that's one of the considerations. And others, another of course is, as you have just mentioned before we started our, our, our conversation, we also have staff getting positive. I don't have, again, the number. We have two, three faculty members. And you can just imagine if one teacher gets positive, then the students go face to face. So what happens to the students? The other, other teachers could not cover always for another teacher. So what do you do with those students? So we were thinking that going online or remote learning could really help us, the students who are maybe positive and those who are not can go distant learning. Everybody continues their learning learning experience and the teacher or the staff, if he or she is positive, but asymptomatic or maybe minor symptoms can still go and hold distant learning. So in going, in going into shifting into distant learning, I think the whole process of learning continues in spite of the situation that we have right now. So we all know that uh, distant learning is not the norm. I think nothing can replace the face-to-face -face teaching. I always tell teachers when I'm able to talk with them, I said I could not even imagine. I, I have taught since I was uh, ordained a priest in seminaries, in high schools, in colleges. I have taught 
and I could never imagine myself teaching in distant learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have not done that in my life. So I know the sacrifices that our teachers are doing, but what can we do? That's all that we can do as of the moment for the safety of everyone. So another major consideration that we we have, that's why we shifted to distant learning is, as you have been mentioning, uh, our school supplies for test kits is, uh, according to the to the to our administrators, uh, we have I think test kits that will last until only until tomorrow. And you know, being able to test our kids that go to school when we when we you know when we see minor symptoms. We have to test them in order to make sure that they are safe to go to school. But when we run out of test kits, so how can we assure our community that our schools will continue to be safe? That's why the move that we have done is really proactive, uh, uh, Chris. I mean, we don't want to wait for that time, then it might be too late for us to act. Right. That's why it's very, pro it's very, uh, it's a really a very proactive uh, approach on our side yeah it is uh, we did have a comment here uh, i don't want to make it awkward uh father val father val proactive gov lieutenant gov reactive that was kind of funny but uh, uh father can we just go into the test kits you said that you guys only have enough test kits to last until tomorrow can you give us more background on that who uh gets the test kits for you guys um uh, and maybe explain a little bit of the short the reason for the shortage yeah. So in my meeting, very long meeting, by the way, yesterday with our administrators, um, I was informed that the test kits that we have as of now in our schools, if uh, if the trend continues, we will be able to sustain or maintain the testing capability of our schools until Friday. And we are not assured that we can have test kits after that. And uh, Honestly, of course, it's public health that supplies us all of those supplies. And with with the you know situation on the island, it is very understandable that they are they are not able to to supply us with those test kits at the moment. Which, in a way, honestly, in a practical point of view, I would understand with all of this. Of course, they have to take care of the of the more public. Uh, uh, sites for testing, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. that's just that's just understandable. And with that, as uh, not being able to, we are not assured that we can have still test kits by Monday, Tuesday, or what do we do when our students come and we suspect them to be, to have the virus and we cannot test them. So how can we assure, uh, how can we be sure that our school community will continue to be safe? So our school communities as of the moment are, are very safe, Chris. This is just really very being proactive. We don't yeah. know want to wait at that time <laughs> and then we, we just all of a sudden shut down <laughs> uh, so that so it's a major decision yeah. it was a crazy day for me Chris and I know that uh I get a lot of reactions both positive and negative let's of talk course, about I look at those negatives <laughs> yeah. Father okay, Val, what are the negative reactions well of course some people are just saying that uh, this is just an ordinary flu <laughs> Why do we have to shut down our schools? I, I, I don't know. Uh, be, going back to be, being uh, before COVID, remember, even when a student just has an ordinary flu, we don't accept them in the classroom because we don't want everybody to get a flu. So why is now all of a sudden the, the question of the, it's just a flu? So are, so are we like, uh, for me, it's a question of so are we now just uh, past this COVID time? Hopefully it will be clear. So are we saying that after this COVID time, when somebody has a flu, it's okay to go to the classroom and what? <laughs> you know? Right. Father, Father uh, were there other concerns about maybe parents uh, not having like the, the child care or someone to stay home with the kids who are now on, online? Yeah, definitely. That's why, that's why Chris, uh, we, we really are appealing to our parents okay that uh, when we shift to distance learning i know i know i mean the the consequence of it to our parents uh that uh, you know the kids will be at home and everything but, and they might need supervision of their parents but as of the moment the utmost importance we have is really the safety and health of everyone and uh, if we do our part then we can help each other. This is not just the role of our teachers, but the, you know the parents will have to play part, do their part also. And uh, 
we, we appeal to our parents really Chris because distance learning one of the one of the concerns is this like father are you sure that when we go on distant learning remote distance learning remote uh, learning will these kids really stay at home when some of them we find them like uh, going to the malls <laughs> going to the so uh, uh, we really need the, the the cooperation of everyone if we do distance learning remote learning and then we go out and as if nothing happens then the whole concept of the distance learning and remote learning is futile and it becomes meaningless so it really is uh, uh, everybody has to play the role in order to make this really work father val what's the yeah. status on our mercy heights yeah so actually the the agreement is uh, uh the distance and remote learning will only be for the first graders and up to high school okay any school that has pre uh, kindergarten down they will continue to be on site okay now the number one reason to that is somebody asked me why would the daycare or if you call them daycare the kindergarten down why would they go continue on site well how can you how can you do distance learning and remote learning with these kids i mean with this age with their age we can't we just can't do distance and remote learning with them that's why our teachers uh, who are taking care of these kids, they consider themselves really as frontliners to make sure that they really take care that it is safe even though they are on site. So they are doing all the protocols that they can to observe strictly the protocols so that to make sure that even though these kids are on site, to make sure that, uh, that uh, it's a safe environment for them health-wise. So, uh, any any sign or any minor symptom is automatically addressed and it's monitored strictly by our teachers. Father Val, I just want to ask the obvious question for uh, people listening out there who would say, well, if you're concerned about uh, first graders on up and you obviously uh, pled your case about making the decision to, to move everyone online, then why doesn't the same uh, argument and principle apply? And you did give the reason, but I'm just saying uh, people are going to say that, oh, well, what's wrong with the pre-k the kindergarten and you're saying that it's just because they're so young that you can't really teach them online right yeah we, we don't wanna chris we don't wanna stop the the learning uh what's the right term for that i mean the learning the process of learning mm -hmm. we don't wanna stop that that's why we don't shut down the school in a sense that everything stops learning continues it will be just a change of mode of learning now instead of a face-to-face -face, it will be distance and remote in order to avoid possibility of transmission of the virus but that mode of learning is really difficult if next to impossibility to do with this kindergarten down i mean in consultation with the administrators and them consulting the teachers it's just for them imp almost impossible to be able to teach kids at that level uh, Father Val, you know, obviously a lot of people in the comments are wondering uh, if the public school system is going to uh, follow suit. I don't want to make it awkward again, but do you have any thoughts or, or uh, feelings about that? Uh, Chris, you know, I can only speak for, uh, you know, uh, there's a, it's a different situation for us. We are a private institution. We are in a way uh, autonomous to a certain degree. We can make decisions like this one major decision that we have to make unlike of course the gdoe it's a government uh, i cannot speak for them right. if we have a lot of factors to consider you know the deliberation chris among all of us the administrators was very long and how i wish i can you know tell you how because we are also divided in this uh in this uh issue right i mean i have to be honest that even among all uh, among us uh, we have to hurdle with each other, but at the end of the day, as I said, uh, being the superintendent, I am called to to make the decision at the end of the day and weigh everything uh, from the comments of our parents, from the comments of our teachers, from the comments of our administrators. And at the end of the day, I will be the one to weigh all of those things and and my own my own uh, discernment on what should be done. So at the end of the day, I just have to make a decision. But if it is difficult for me to decide on that matter, weighing all of those factors, I can imagine the, the position of the one in the 
GDOE, he has more factors to consider. Uh, Father so I Val, understand that. Uh, the former uh, chairman of the Physicians Advisor Group, Dr. Ho Wen, uh, was just uh, texting me, excellent and responsible decisions. Uh, Pre-K and kindergarten are hard to pass the virus due to their small lung capacity. Uh, also, he notes, cannot follow mandates if test kits are not available, but I commend the Catholic schools on the hard but very responsible decision they've made. Yeah, but and I also would like to really commend our administrators of the schools and those in charge of all of this safety protocols and testing and everything in our in our respective schools, in the Catholic schools. They're really doing a great job. As I said, as of the moment, we are a very safe uh, place for learning. But until Friday, when we run out of these test kits, then we have a big question mark on how we assure the safety of our students. That's why we just have to make a decision. So what did public health say, uh, Father? <laughs> I'm still waiting for any, <clears throat> any communication from them. But of course, I was already informed that they have been reaching out to some of our officers, of course, uh, our liaison officer and everything. But directly to me has not yet relayed, but I hope they would understand the decision that we have to make. We just have to assess our own community and, you know, decide on the matter. We don't mean to create any division or any animosity or what. That's not the intention and never will be the intention. All throughout the pandemic uh, situation, our Catholic, uh, our office has been, a, cons uh, we consider ourselves to be partners. That's why if you notice, uh, uh, we really did our part with testing, vaccination, all of those things. Even though, Chris, they are not our mandate. Huh? Yeah. I mean, it's not our obligation to do those things, but our administrators, our teachers are doing extra effort. That's why every time I see them, I really tell them, guys, God bless you. I mean, <laughs> this is not your work anymore, but, you know, we, we, we consider ourselves partners yeah, yeah. with uh, with government. I mean, Father yeah. Val, if you think about it, each and every one of us is the public health authority in this uh, pandemic, right? And especially when there's a, a yeah. vacuum of uh, strong and effective leadership, it really comes down to the Chris's, the Jason's, the Jose's, the Josefa's, the Father Val's to kind of pick everything <laughs> up and, and make these decisions. Father Val, before we let you go, I did want to ask you to uh, pray with us, if you could, or lead us in prayer. Yeah, right? but, oh, uh, wait, I think Jason has something. Yeah, but uh, if, I may, yeah. Uh, if I may add something, so just for just for clarification, yeah. Chris, no? uh, for the when does it really start and when does it really end? There are a lot of questions about that. I, I It's good that you already asked how about the kindergarten and what. So I was able to explain that already. So again, for, for clarification, those who will go distance learning will be from first graders to high school. The, the kindergarten down will continue to be on site because it's really difficult to handle them with distance learning. When does it really start? It actually starts today. Okay, so distance learning, remote learning will start today. And the first day that the report is February 7. If February 7 is a Monday, right? That, that's the first day that they return. So, uh, but today, Thursday and Friday, we give the discretion to the respective school administrators if they can immediately jump into distance learning. Because I was listening to you a while ago, Jason was mentioning like you can just imagine the all of a sudden transition of the faculty, the, the giving of the books, the giving of the materials mm. and all of those things, yeah. the planning of how they're going to do it. So in, our, in my meeting with all the administrators, I gave them the discretion. I said, if you can switch to distance learning immediately starting today, Thursday, do so. But if you feel like you need time to prepare, discuss with your parents, with your faculty, plan out, distribute things, then it's all up to you. So whether they begin their distance learning or remote learning today or Friday will be up to them. But by Monday, everybody from the first graders to the high school will go distance learning. So that's how we will handle it. So I ask uh, our parents to communicate. I'm sure that the administrators have already communicated with their with their parents. But just in case you did not receive any communication from your respective school, I ask you, I advise you to communicate with them on when will it start, how it will be, it, how, it, how it will be. But I'm, I'm hoping they have already that, that uh, information with them. I would like to thank, of course, when, when they heard that uh, we will go and shift to distance learning. I'm so happy that GDOE, 
itself, the grant section called me up and said, Father, if we are really confirmed to go into distance learning, uh, we would like to remind you, tell you that, of course, the, the, you know, the laptops that we have from the grants and the MiFi and all of this. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy just the other day they delivered to my office the SIM cards, the new SIM cards for the MiFi. I, I said, wow, God must have been preparing, <laughs> preparing it. We, we were not <laughs> discussing about distance learning yet. And yet here we are, the SIM cards uh, delivered to my office the other day for the new SIM cards for the MiFi of the students. So I would like to uh, remind our, our administrators that all of those laptops that we have collected after we started face to face, maybe they may sign up again and avail of those laptops so that everybody can have, you know, can have the access to internet for distance learning. So I would like to really thank GDOE for that support and, uh, you know, the grants. Would like to thank the school administration and the staff. And as I have mentioned, Chris, I just would like really to emphasize that to our parents, Okay, I know we have different points of view of how we will tackle this. I know that uh, some of you may not agree with the decision that we go distance learning. I, my friends yesterday have been texting me and asked me how brave you are making the decision. I, I told them, just look at me as a father who at the end of the day has to think of what is best and safe for my students, for my kids, even though my kids sometimes may not like my decision. But as a father, I just have to, you know, make the decision for them. I should know better as a father. And so I appeal to the parents, you know, to understand us, to go with us. Uh, they always know that the decisions we make are not decisions that we just, uh, we just love doing. <laughs> These are tough decisions to yep. make. We yep. have just to make this. And we ask for their help in making this work. How, what do I mean by that? As I've already mentioned, we go distance learning. Plus, but please help the kids to really go distance learning. Don't let them go around, go to the malls or what, or else it just defeats the whole purpose of the distance mm -hmm. learning of avoiding the transmission. Thank you very much to all of you. I have a lot of people to thank. I might not be able to thank you to Catherine Castro, Tony Diaz, who have been assisting us in all our concerns. Thank you very much to all of you. God bless you and let us try. It's one of us you play the role in order to really put a curve to this church sure. yeah i would like to end with a prayer that will be I nice think jason, so, oh, yeah, sorry yeah, father, father, jason father, father if i may oh, yeah, jason, yeah. I, yes uh, yeah thank you father um I, I thought that was a wonderful message to give to the parents um i was also going to ask is there a a message that you would like to deliver through this show to the students themselves and the faculty members who you know whether they're uh transitioning to distance learning today or tomorrow or monday uh you know obviously there's a lot of students who might say okay well it is what it is you know i'm not crazy about it but i'm going to attack it i mean obviously uh, you can do so much better as a, as a student and make the most of this if you keep like a positive attitude. Uh, so, so to the yes, students and yes. the faculty, what, what would you say, Father? Well, first of all, the faculty. You know, as I have already mentioned, it's not easy to teach distance learning. Mm -hmm. it, it's such a very taxing job to do. I mean, everybody would just love to go face to face. So I know how difficult it will be for our faculty. So thank you, thank you very much for all the effort, the, the extra effort that you have to do in order to go into this distance learning. And of course, they all know, especially our teachers in the Catholic school, that this is not just a job that we do. This is a mission of, uh, you know, forming our kids in the, in, the, in the likeness of Christ. I mean, it's a mission. I, I always tell them in my conversations with them, when you enter a Catholic school as a teacher, bear in mind that you are not here just a teacher, but you are here as a mother, as a father sent by God to take care of this kid. So sometimes as a father and mother, we just really have to do sacrifices. To our students, of course, I know you don't like, you know, we have received even few reports that some students, even though sometimes they have uh, the symptom, they would really force into going face to face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, so, uh, you know, we, we can, we can, this is what the situation we are in now. And of course, we just have to do, as Jason, you have mentioned, we just have to do what we can to make the most of it. Mm -hmm. We are into distance learning now, instead of just continuously fighting the situation of distance learning, distance learning. We are already in this situation. We might as well make it productive for everyone. It will take both of you and the teacher and everybody else to make this really work for everyone. And always think that it's your safety and healthy that uh, health that we are think of that, that we are thinking of. That's why we 
made this major decision. Thank so you, I hope even though we are in distance learning, we will continue to learn and form each other. Mm-hmm. Positive mental attitude goes a, goes a long way. Thank you, Father. Could, Thank you, Father. Could we end with Thank a prayer, you. please? Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving Father, we always express our gratitude to you for in spite of the many difficulties that we experience right now, especially with this another surge of this pandemic, we know that you continuously give us all the blessings that we need. We thank you for this beautiful morning, for giving us another life. And we truly believe that everything that comes into our lives are only ways of showing you our fidelity to you. That in spite of what we experience right now with this pandemic, may we see your will for us that this makes us stronger believers in you and more faithful to you. Loving Father, we lift up to you all of those in authority, both in government and in the church. Help us. Give us the spirit of discernment. Give us the enlightenment, the wisdom. Most importantly, Lord, let us see your will so that may we continue to always put into practice what you want us to do. Of course, for the good of the of your people here on earth. For we desire only one thing, to always do your will and take care of those people you entrust to our care. We entrust to you all our frontliners, loving Father. We continue to ask you to give them the strength and the inspiration. It can be very tiring for them for already more than two years. We have been combating this pandemic. We know how tired they are. So we ask you, Lord, to give them the strength and the health and the inspiration they need so that they may continue to serve our communities, especially our sick brothers and sisters. We ask you, Lord, we beg you to touch all of those who are sick, especially those infected with coronavirus. Loving Father, you are almighty. You are sublime. You have all the power to clear them from any virus. We put our trust in you and we consider you to be our loving Father who would always give us what is good for each one of you, for each one of us. We lift up to you our island and the world. We ask you, Lord, to keep us safe always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Thank you very much. Viva Santa Maria Carmelin. Viva! Viva! Thank you, Father Val. Thank you, God Father. bless you. There you go, Father Val Rodriguez here. We did have a couple comments. Oh, man. What a prayer. He's good. Yeah. He's really, really oh, good. God bless you, Father Val. Marilyn comments in. Uh, God bless you, Father Val, for a wise discernment. Continue to do a, a good job. Um, J- Jesse Rosario. Our teachers need a pin. Yeah, they do. Where's the teacher's pin? Uh, Cynthia, my kids. They need a pin. They need a collar. You know, they need a vest. You know what? Yeah. Let's get them the NHS sash. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. Matt, uh, you know, okay. I'm not, I'm not a ashamed to admit this right now father i've never actually shed a tear during a catholic prayer yeah i i i let a few go like on that one and everything yeah. like father 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 val's prayer is a beautiful 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 prayer, prayer. and uh nothing wrong with crying you guys it's a, it's a great way to emote yeah it is uh 